Hello and welcome to the Mordecast. Before we start this podcast, I have a little update for you about good things that happened between recording and publishing of this episode. In the episode, we're discussing a Mordic version 2.15.4. It has now been decided to publish a 2.16 instead with a lot of bug fixes, but also with support for a new feature in Chrome that we're also discussing in the episode. 2.16 is scheduled for immediate release if everything goes well, January 30th. And props to Dennis Armeling in the Netherlands, who is the manager of this release, and thumbs up to the entire team. And now, let's start. This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hacky Gamble. That's right. Welcome back to the Monocast. It's number five. Leon likes to call it Mambo number five. <laughs> hey, Leon, how are you doing? Very good, thanks. And then welcome to all our listeners. Um, later in this episode, I'm going to talk to my good friend Jan Linhardt about the Mordic Marketplace. Before we go there, we have a lot of ground to cover. So like always, we jump right in. Um, obviously, most important on everybody's uh, radar these days is Mordic number three. Wow, <laughs> Mordic version three has too many numbers today. Um, so what's going on with Mordic three? Uh, a lot. Uh, Sadly, too much is going on, therefore the beta has been, de been delayed. The best case timeline is uh, the past and the new timeline is not even published. The team is, has made the decision to, to take the time they need to get it really right. And to decrease the pain, they also consider releasing a 2.15.4, that is a new bug fix release for version 2, to... Uh, basically buy them more time and I highly respect that decision I think the right way to go good job guys um, talking of timeline Ruth Chisley who we talked to last time um, has released a little bit of a video on, on YouTube giving us an overview not only of her vision of Mordic but also the, the goals for the coming month Uh, walking all the way from January to December 2020. And uh, a lot of gems in that, but a true highlight for me there was the handling of the backlog in, in the GitHub, where that's hundreds of issues and PRs as of today. And that means there's a lot of uh, energy and knowledge and bug fixes in there, hidden and unused. And she's aiming to, or basically... The product team, along with her, is aiming to uh, reduce that backlog, find out what's obsolete, and, and merge or, or review and merge everything else step by step. And uh, by mid of 2020, uh, having no leftover backlog. And that's fantastic news, of course. It applies to version 2 and 3, or I would, I would guess 2.3, but, but also would cover the, the issues that relate to version 2 because they may or may not apply still. So that's fantastic and um, that also addresses the, the pain point that Josu raised um, and I, I think he's even involved in, in this development. So good job. Okay, so um, that's the news from the Mordic world. Leon, you, you found another important piece of news outside of that world tell us about it yeah i read different articles on the internet concerning the so-called end of third-party cookies <laughs> yeah it sounds like really terrifying um because google chrome is starting to toughen up the use of third-party cookies so you have more restrictions and concerning modic you should be good if you have modic running on your subdomain then you should not be bothered. But if you have Modic running on a third-party domain, then you might be in trouble. Yeah, so, so our website is on, on leuchtfeuer.com and our Modic is on ma.leuchtfeuer.com. Yeah. That is a typical subdomain. We're not affected here. But what if the, uh, the automation system is on 
trackme.hubspot.com or so. For example. <laughs> um, in that case, it is a third-party cookie. And um, it's true, I saw those articles as well who are claiming the end of the world. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. Um, it is not as uh, strict as, as others are, like, like Firefox and Safari. Google is selling advertising after all, so they won't easily stop tracking and then uh, of course not no. <laughs> pay for that so what they did is uh, implement an old concept that's called the same site attribute and so the, lets the server decide whether a cookie is to be delivered only if you see the, the same URL in your browser or whether it is de de uh, delivered if uh, in, uh, invoked by, by a different site yep. so third party Cookie, the, the, the Mautic system or, or the third-party system is, is by itself, if I get it right, able to decide whether it is uh, uh, going, going to work or not. Uh, and it is placed as a security feature, not a, an anti-tracking feature as far as I understand. So um, long story short, if your Mautic system is running on, on its own domain, on a different domain than, than your website then you should take action very quickly oh, because the yeah. uh, 4th of February is uh, Not that immediate. Far. <laughs> yeah. Preferably just move it to a subdomain of your main website. If that's not possible or if you have multiple websites on different domains, then you're screwed. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, there, there's actually a pull request that implements that same site feature. Uh, we'll link to it in the show note, it's uh, 8347 in GitHub for the experts among us. And that will be part of 215.4, but uh, if you don't want to wait, you can just take the pull request and, and merge it to your installation if you know how to do that and uh, be still able to track Chrome users as you did before. The uh, question is if... Uh the 2.15.4 version is released before the 4th of no, February. No, certainly not. I mean, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so go ahead and do that. The reason behind that, or the reasons behind all this anti-tracking are, are all good things, and I'm all for it, um, because I also don't want to be tracked by those uh, worldwide things like, like double-click, etc. Neither do I. To yeah. me, that's not the same as, as Mordic is. It's a uh, it's, it's the good ones and the bad ones. And of course, we are the good ones. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> and uh, so basically, uh, the pro provider of a website of, of so, some, some digital asset wants to do something with it as opposed to uh, I want to uh, have the transparent user and, and uh, rule the world and so on. Okay. So speaking of that, when, when you look at Firefox and Safari, they, they do have um, other approaches. They have uh, anti-tracking things enabled by default, but but not fully. It's called intelligent or whatever, ITP. Um, and as far as I see it, it's, for example, in Firefox, they, they make a distinction between social media and tracking, cross-site okay. cookies and other cross-site cookies. Uh, I have no idea how they can make a distinction there unless they have a list of what is a tracking cookie domain. As far as I see, Mordic is still working even with the latest Firefox versions. That's good to know. Yeah, but, yeah. It, but it, it is going to be tighter and eventually we will all have to move uh, to, to subdomain solutions. Uh, that's also my, my feature wish list item of the week, I guess, <laughs> uh, to enable Mautic to run on multiple domains, to respond to multiple subdomains and work with multiple domains. Yeah, maybe a last side note here. If you think just do different tracking, don't use cookies, cookies just use fingerprinting. Even that is is gone by now, at least for Firefox and others will, will follow up yeah. fingerprint as a identifying identifying a device by by the operating system, by, by the fonts installed, by the extensions installed, by network information, etc. Everything an application can learn about a browser, put that all together and that makes a unique unique user more or less, and that's called a fingerprint. And uh, one approach is to track via that fingerprint 
and it's uh, best practice not to use it, but use cookies and use it properly. Good. One more in the realm of uh, security. And that's a pretty simple one. And for us, it has been best practice all along, but it, it turns out that uh, it's not really well known in the world. The point is when somebody plays around and fools around and uh, finds out what your modic URL is, then uh, it, when he enters that domain, what will he see? The login screen. The login screen. Of course. <laughs> True. And uh, best practice is information hiding. So we want to redirect that guy or girl to something else, yeah. typically to our regular website. And that could be done by, by hardcore tricking on the Apache level, but it's much simpler than that. Um, the clean way is to do that directly in within Mordic, and we have a little uh, know-how article on our website, and I link to that in the show notes, like always. Yeah. But the bottom line is... Um, You can set Mordic to show a, a landing page instead of the login page. Um, so what you do is create a little empty landing page that might be called redirect and disable that landing page. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the metadata of the landing page, you can set a redirect in the Mordic properties um, and so send it to any external URL. And uh, that's it. Oh, so, simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and helpful and, and should be done by everybody. Good. Uh, I want to get a little bit geeky today. And uh, based on a blog post by our friends at, at AutoEyes, um, they, so they wrote something up about uh, large instances of Mautic. Uh, so large in terms of high traffic or high, um, high numbers of data. Yeah. Um, obviously, that is only for those people who are self-hosting Mordic and uh, who do that large scale, like in, in many thousand hits per whatever, let's say 10 minutes or so. The, yeah, the, the hits <laughs> per month is not so helpful. You, you need to look at the, the biggest peaks. Mm -hmm. And, and um, depending on your hardware, Mordic can handle a lot, but there are limits and eventually you run into... Uh, a situation where you want to scale out. And that is done by any sort of multi-server setup, mm -hmm. a cluster, so to say. Um, you can add resources on, on a VM level, on, on a virtual machine level, but that has limits too. The other way to go is to have an actual cluster, which can also be VM, cloud, or whatever, but multiple operating systems, multiple instances of Mautic, yeah. which do operate on the same data. And by data, I mean files and database, obviously. Files um, is pretty simple, is pretty static, uh, so that's typically done in NFS, whereas uh, database is the one and, and uh, tricky point. Uh, the setup that, that they recommend here in, in, uh, at AudioEyes is a uh, to have multiple modic instances with a multi-master database setup. So, so okay, every instance yeah. has its own database and they all replica replicate uh, among each other. In my experience, um, in a write-heavy environment like we have in Mordic, that's not so efficient because sync becomes an overhead overhead too so what we do for serious clusters is have a powerful database backend which is high available through other means like like drbd yep. and have all those other servers work on that database other than that the concept is is pretty straightforward you may even have a separate instance which does nothing but but run the cron jobs ah yeah and, nice um, <laughs> one, two, seven, or 15 front-end servers who deliver, who run the PHP, who give the power that we need. Yep. There's an extra layer um, called Redis. For those who haven't heard of it, it's basically an extra layer of cache uh, that gives even more performance. It It is positioned more like, like a stickiness feature in, in the article, uh, session Stickiness, and here we're really geeky, is uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that on the load balancer level. It's not a Pullman solution like like uh, it's called here, <laughs> mostly. Um, 
But Redis is, of course, even better because it gives gives an extra boost. Yep. So, uh, yeah, recommended reading. Um, if you are one of those who are struggling with, with the performance of the Omotic installation, here's some hints. And uh, if you have specific needs, uh, I am happy to discuss because uh, there's high availability, high performance setups have been long ter long-term hobby of mine. Huh? No, uh, it's a professional hobby. <laughs> no, I like it. Okay, look, um, what's up in the community? There's a lot going on. Um, tons of, of team meetings. So the teams are uh, really flourishing um, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and making progress in terms of uh, structuring themselves and then getting things done too. We still need more people in the team, so please uh, don't be shy. Just show up or, or reach out and, and uh, we'll help you get started without any pain. So, uh, yeah. You're Come welcome. and contribute. Yeah. Um, currently, there's a process going on of, of determining temporary team leads and mm -hmm. is at the same time preparing the, the system for the actual uh, elected team leads, basically for the election of those team leads because she wants it to do it to do it really right and I appreciate that highly also in the uh, community area there's a show coming up called FOSDEM in, in Brussels it's, it's actually this weekend mm -hmm. February 1st to 2nd yeah. uh, it's free and open, open source uh, expo um, and uh, to make sure Mordic is properly represented there. Ruth is going to travel once again. Uh, others will help out, like like Stefan that I know of. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll have a booth there. Ruth will have a talk there, I, th I believe, and then uh, yeah, spread the word basically. Nice. Okay, now we're finally getting to the Mordic marketplace, and here comes Jan Linhart. Hey, John, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hi, okay. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm doing fine. Okay. Th thanks for your time. For everybody who is not familiar with your name, uh, John Linhart is one of the, the core developers in the Modic team. Uh, you're an Acquia employee, right? Uh, but but uh, how did you get started with Modic and what did you do? Before that, I understand you were part of the Joomla community, but I have no other details. So why don't we start with that? Okay. Uh, so when it started, so so at, at the high school, I started playing uh, HTML, CSS. Um, and um, then I learned about uh, Joomla. Um, uh, I was, it was in, in the Netherlands, I think. Um, and so... With, with my knowledge of HTML and CSS, uh, it uh, boosted my capabilities to build uh, dynamic websites. And that was so what I year? played with it. Sorry, what, what year was that? Oh, what year? Might have been 2004 is a wild guess. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Go uh, ahead. So, so back, back then it was uh, called Mambo. Um, maybe that, that will give a better uh range on the date yeah um yeah so um that was my hobby and, and uh, at uh, at the university i started to uh, uh you know uh provide my services to to other other clients and so on and um i was studying uh civil engineering at Czech, Czech Technical University, and there was a small program for IT uh, enthusiasts. So I was there, and they taught me how to um, write uh, object-oriented programming in C Sharp. Hmm. So I applied that to write uh, Joomla plugins and modules and comp components. Um, Are you saying you did Joomla plugins in C Sharp? No, 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 in PHP. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> I just. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I uh, really wished to start programming earlier. It was quite late for me, but I didn't know how to start with that. Uh, um, I, I was reading, and uh, it never got get me going. Um, 
so that course at the university helped me understand what programming is about, what are the basics. So I applied, uh, I applied that knowledge to PHP and um, did some uh, work for, for uh, my customers. And I also, also uh, used Gemma to, um, to develop uh, my thesis project. And uh, one of the uh, PhD students uh, on the faculty had a software company that uh, specializes on creating web pages in, in Joomla. So basically, he, he hired me directly when I, when I finished um, oh, the school. And um, yeah, from, from there, uh, like uh, three years later, uh, the, uh, the Czech company uh, decided to organize the first Joomla Day in Prague uh, conference. And um, we asked several uh, community, Joomla community people to come, come to the event and speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them was uh, D.B. Harley. Uh-huh. And <laughs> so I had, uh, uh, I think I had two, uh, two talks at that event. And uh, D.B. was sitting there listening. Uh, it, was, it was in Czech, I think. But uh, he was somehow, well, I was talking about code, so uh, it's uh, not that difficult to understand the slides. And so then we talked after, after the event um, and um, uh, me a job right away. So, <laughs> but it was, it was too good to be true. So, so I was like, hang on, uh, I will work for you for several months uh, on the weekends. Uh, just to ensure that you are no scammer. <laughs> so I did, and then, then it somehow, um, yeah, uh, went into a full-time job. And that's 2015, right? That's 2014. Oh, early days. Okay, and uh, what is your role in the Mordic project or in Mordic in general today? So, so I work on Mordic mostly in Acquia. Um, so we, we have a we have a fork of Modic, um, and most most of what we develop in in our fork we push to the to the community repository. Well, all of it that that touches the core uh, community code. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you are also active uh, in the so community, I, right? Um, yes, yes. I I am more active than than others. I I think um, it it's kind of my my hobby uh, to. To, to uh, help the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, that's uh, very obvious and highly appreciated across the community. Just curious, um, you are located in the Czech Republic most of the days, right? Uh, so how do you organize yourselves um, in this multinational team of Acquia? Yeah, so, so now we have a team of uh, five people here in Prague. Ah. Um, and uh, we have an office here, so we meet every day uh, here. But uh, the rest of our team is in Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, uh, the mornings are very calm and we can get stuff done. And uh, yeah. afternoon when the U.S. wakes up, we have meetings. And uh, Of course. Um, but you are uh, a scrum team of your own or is it uh, a split scrum team? Uh, yeah, so so uh, I recently uh, got the role of Scrum Master, mm-hmm. so I'm kind of in the in the learning mode and uh, trying things uh, on on our team, wow. testing what works and what what doesn't. Cool, very good. Okay, let's let's move to Modic it's itself itself, um, and then move on to the marketplace, which I wanted to talk to you uh, in the first place. Um, but in, in general, when you look at the situation of, of Mordic and the market and, and the legislation, etc., what, what are Mordic's biggest strengths and, and potentials as of today? And where do you see it going? Well, yeah, Mordic's strengths. Um, I mean, the uniqueness of Mordic uh, as a marketing automation platform is that it's open source and open in general for, for data as well. So when you use some competitor's service you basically are dependent on them so uh, if they if, if you use uh, some 
for example, proprietary CRM or CRM they do not support, then you cannot do anything about it. With Modic, you can look at what uh, already community did for that. And if, if there is nothing, you can develop it yourself or pay somebody to do it for you. Exactly. Like, uh, I mean, that's the greatest strength of Modic. Yeah, I, think I, I agree. The openness and the potential to uh, do more about uh, data protection, etc., have it under your own control and everything. Okay, let's talk about the marketplace. You had an initiative like like uh, four or five weeks ago, and you not only said, hey, let's do something like that, but you actually published a piece of code and then uh, analysis of, of, of uh, what, what you learned from it and all that. And uh, you had a discussion going on in the forum, which you spawned uh, about thoughts of what you did and the things that other did. And there has actually been some, some good follow-up. And it sounds like uh, others already thought about the same thing and, and were able to contribute things. And so uh, a thing was started that everybody is desperate for. And basically it's, it's uh, two things. One is a more advanced uh, install process for Mordic itself, but also for the plugins. Technically, uh, proper use of Composer uh, install, etc. Um, and on the other hand, a an actual marketplace, a place, a UI where people can discover the, the growing number of additional features and, and uh, download or, or install or whatever, uh, find the documentation, and also where, where developers can publish uh, their stuff at a central place, um, eventually even... Uh, get paid for it, or, or uh, offer training, or what, what, what have you. Uh, let, let's let's start with with the letter, with the UI part. Do you do you have a specific or may, maybe an abstract vision for that? And, and um, did you receive any feedback on the UI level on the on the actual marketplace? What's your so thoughts on that? Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I have uh, a work in progress uh, pull request um, against the community repository, so anyone can uh, follow my steps and test it uh, as as I move on. Uh, but yes, there is a UI. It's it's basically uh, using uh, packages.org as a repository where the where the plugins are hosted. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uses the API to uh, display the Modic plugins in inside Modic administration directly, uh, with with all the information the packages provides, some stats about downloads, about uh, stars, so the users can directly see how popular it is. And uh, there will be uh, there already is an install button, so they don't have to download anything and upload it somewhere. So uh, with with uh, one button, they can install the, the, the plugin. Uh, the problem there is um, that uh, it uses Composer uh, to do the installation and, and download, um, which is not a problem for uh, developers or the users. The problem is that it's slow, so it takes like a minute to, to uh, download and install the plugin. And that um, brings us directly we, to, to the other level, to the underlying infrastructure that, that it takes to install stuff, right? And uh, the, if I get it right, there, there's breaking changes required to really speed that up, to, to have a, a change or a, a more advanced install mechanism that, that has proper dependency management, etc. So sorry for everyone. Uh, who is not too technical. This is a little bit geeky, but it's just going to be one minute to so stay with us for a second. Um, so Yeah, it, so, so Composer takes care of all the dependencies, so that's not a problem. The problem for the UI part is that it's slow. Uh, it's slower than the default yeah. uh, time limit, so uh, that's yeah. problematic. I understand that, that to, to really bring that on, on a new level, Uh, implies breaking changes, so either we have uh, workarounds or we need to wait for a Modic 4, would that be the bottom line? Um, there are really no breaking changes. Um, 
uh, the way I try to solve it is to uh, warn the user that, uh, uh, like, Modic can see what the time limit of uh, the HTTP request is, mm -hmm. and uh, it can estimate how long the installation will take. So if uh, the uh, installation will take uh, more than the time limit is, it would fail in the middle, and it would be in a unknown state mm. it will probably break modic so mm. so i won't let users install uh, such plugins if the time limit is too low mm. and uh, instead provide uh, an information how to either increase it so they could install the plugins or uh, give them a copy paste command to install it yeah. via command line yeah cool that sounds, sounds so that, to me that, like, like a typical workaround before we actually get yeah. to, to a speed level that, that doesn't bring any problem with it. And if, if that would be available for Mordic 3, maybe as an uh, installable plugin or whatever, I don't know, or PR, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure it's, it's going to be core, but it, that doesn't matter really. But but the bottom line is there is already like, like a proof of concept there Uh, that, that achieves this this goal, and it's, it's, it's a very important first step towards the the actual marketplace on a higher level, and, and it's already helpful. We had a discussion last time whether it's a good thing to have uh, to allow everyone to install what they like, um, especially in a hosted environment. Uh, as a SaaS provider, I wouldn't re really appreciate that do you have any thoughts on yeah. that yeah so so with with the aquia modic cloud we we have the same problem right we cannot let users install anything they can find on the internet uh, for security reasons mostly um and and of, of course for performance as well it can take our cloud down uh, if, if it's not optimized sure so will you go like a whitelist uh, yeah, way? Yeah, that there will be a configuration. Yes, yes, something like that. That there will be a configuration option to to disable the UI, mm -hmm. so users cannot install oh, anything, anything themselves. But yeah. it, but uh, the administrator uh, can still use the command line to install plugins for them. Yeah. Uh, or or as you said, there can be a whitelist. Uh, so uh, if if the cloud Uh, system or whatever how it's how it's put together enables installation of additional uh, PHP files to each uh, cloud instance. Then they can uh, create some whitelist and uh, and let uh, their users or customers to install only mm. those plugins that are whitelisted. Yeah. Back to the uh, composer uh, progress. Um, are, are you also aiming to make uh, Mordic deployable, like like with uh, Jenkins or other CD systems, or is that not on on the Mordic itself? Yeah, yeah, it, it, the complete thing, a complete Mordic installation, including plugin up, upgrade, for instance. Uh, um, is it not not on the schedule for for this step? Yeah, so so I I, uh, I, I started with. Uh, this question, uh, how to install Modic with, with Composer and then keep it up to date with Composer. Yeah. Uh, I, I hit, a, hit, hit a wall there uh, a little, so I backed up and I found a way how to install Modic with Composer. So you just uh, go to your server, uh, paste in one command and it will install uh, Modic in, instead of downloading Modic from somewhere, uploading it, unzipping it, and so on. That's the right direction. So, I like it. So it's, uh, yeah, so, so that's the that described on, on my blog, um, which, and it's a little bit outdated because since then um, we uh, moved uh, Modic itself to, to packages, so uh, the command itself is uh, way shorter now. I will update the, the post. So, yeah, but um, it's, it's not optimal. The optimal way would be that Modic itself would be a dependency of a project, not the project itself. Yeah. And it would make the installation uh, of plugins uh, simpler. And uh, that's, that's the way how Composer uh, was meant to work. So the way we will use it in Modic will be uh, somehow banned or hacked, uh, which is never never a good solution. But yeah. I don't want to BC break anything uh, with Marketplace. I just want to 
to be accepted by the community and uh, start using it. I think that the typical way to, to work with the state of the product that is there and have a, a demonstration of, of uh, the value, proof of concept and everything, and then maybe next version, um, maybe if you go to extreme, redo everything from scratch, but, but incorporate the, the breaking changes that are needed on the modic side to have, to have it the right way. So that, that would be very typical for new big feature, features, and that's what we're talking about here. I have, I have another. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely, sorry. the modic, modic uh, folder structure will have to change uh, anyway because uh, of uh, new Symfony versions. So we will probably uh, adjust that uh, with the future modic yeah, versions. Perfect. Okay. Now that you kicked that off, and uh, you already had a good amount of feedback of, of relevant people, really. Um, Do you have any vision how this project should be carried forward? Is, is this like a team of its own or is it a project that you lead and others contribute your, to yours or, or any idea yet? Yeah, so, so I already had a request from Zdeno Kuzmani uh, that he would like to help with the commerce side of things because he um, uh, sells his plugins, so it's yeah. uh, uh, in his interest. Um, but I, I want to get the core of, of it uh, stable because I'm testing things um, uh, how to how to do it properly. I uh, uh, re rewrote the plugin several times already, so I don't want him to take it as a base and then develop on something that may change yeah. later. Um, so yeah, I, I want to create uh, an MVP, the, the basic core, yeah. um, and there are other ideas from the feedback I got, like, uh, we cannot uh, install uh, plugins uh, through the UI directly. Like, uh, the feedback was it, it should be queued because it, is, is, it takes a long time for a, a HTTP request and we cannot let our users to wait there yeah. for a minute um, yeah. and stare at, at the progress bar. So, yeah, th those are... Those are additional um, steps to take. To take, um, but uh, as, as I do it on my own times, and uh, I have uh, two small children, uh, <laughs> it's it's hard to find the time to uh, write it. So I, I want to make the scope as minimal as I can, and then we can improve it. MVP after the is perfect approach. Very good. Okay. Um... Before I let you go, I have another thing on my mind, and that is the acquisition of Agile One by Acquia. Uh, for those who haven't heard that, Agile One is, is in the area of, of artificial intelligence, intelligence, which, which is a, a, a natural enhancement uh, to marketing automation. Um, so is there a relation, relation? Are you working or are you going to work with the Agile One team? Is there anything you can talk about to today? Yes. So there are uh, meetings happening uh, uh, the whole January, basically, about how to integrate uh, uh, Modic, Agile One, and uh, Lyft uh, services together. So... Yep, uh, some some AI and uh, ML capabilities to Modic will come, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, that will be a service provided by Agile One, so uh, oh. it won't be part of Modic itself. Okay, but but uh, the the interface will be part of the the open source project of Modic, so it's going to be available for everyone, or maybe a paid uh, service it, that hasn't been decided yet uh, i i had this exact exact question uh, at one of the meetings and they say why not uh, there is no reason why not provide why not, not to provide agile one uh, services to the community if it's paid service it might be a business model and it, it would be an, another great plus for modic of course cool i'm very much looking forward to that whenever it's going to come and uh, but but i, I find it fascinating stuff and obviously it's it's a, a hot topic and then a maybe even a selling point or, or marketing bullet point or whatever but but by itself i think it's really interesting stuff yes good um you already mentioned your blog page on on john .com. what can people find there and what other channels should i use to follow you yeah so so you can find the projects I'm working on and what I did in the past, uh, what I'm reading. Um, 
So I, I put there as summaries of uh, what interests me. Um, and you can find me also on Twitter um, at uh, Jan underscore Linhart, J-A-N underscore Linhart. Mm-hmm. Uh, I post there the same thing. Whatever is new with me, it's, it's there. Okay, cool. And uh, one, one last thing. Um, Jan Linhart, John Linhart, you have a blog post that explains why, why, why internationally you call yourself John Linhart. Um, uh, yeah. But, yes, but then, I'm known sorry. in the community as John because it's an English-speaking community, so yeah. I, then, I just did my name. Then, then there's another uh, a name that, that pops up in your con- context that says Escopes or something. I don't think oh, yeah. it's uh, something with CZ that, probably, but but uh, <laughs> what, what what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that that used to be my my domain uh, for. Uh, Check blog post I, I wrote about Joomla and where I published all, all of my modules and plugins and components, but uh, that's uh, that's already closed. So yeah, it's it's still my GitHub username. Uh, I don't know if I can change it's just it. Legacy. If, it's if it's it, not like like a secret yeah. Colombian uh, <laughs> <laughs> thing. Okay, okay, good, got it, good. Uh, anything else you want to say to our listeners? No, no. I, I'm just glad that you are doing what you are doing. The podcast is amazing. And and I'm very, very glad you had the time today. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope we're going to talk again soon. Take care. Yeah, me too. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Um, good stuff. I can't wait to see the next steps. And I, I know there's a bit of things going on yeah. even beyond what we just discussed. So Pretty exciting. Yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. Um, what else is coming up? FOSDEM, we already talked about that, the, the trade show in Brussels, uh, Belgium. Um, there's another show uh, popping up on the horizon. That's uh, Morticon. Yeah. The Mortic Conference worldwide thingy for the first time ever. We all hope and, and uh, do our best to make it happen, happen in in heaven and also in 20, <laughs> 2020 uh, that means this year and uh the the date set that might be the one is uh november like like mid of november plus, uh, yeah, maybe maybe a bit later yeah um no promises but um preparations are in good shape and uh we'll certainly talk mo- more about that looks promising so is there like a country set where it will take place or <laughs> good question that, that's or one you... of the discussions going on right now um it i, I i'm pretty sure it's n- not going to be in europe this year but on the other side of the pond yeah. um so the natural <laughs> uh, f- expectation would be us of course yeah um but there is a um, there are strong voices voices who say uh, why not Brazil because uh, because it, it's um, a strong community over there as well oh, yeah, it's indeed. a sign of appreciation and uh, it's not too hard to get to Brazil from from other places in the world and there are reasonably priced pl- uh, priced flights. Mm-hmm problem from the european perspective is yeah. that uh, it's, it's a pretty long travel yeah it is but that's true vice versa as well so if we should be in europe next year then everybody from brazil would have the same problem why should they have bigger problem than we do so um no decisions made um i don't know we'll see we'll see I know that uh, there's another thing going on, and that's DrupalCon um, earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there, there were thoughts about doing Morticon in the context of DrupalCon. Yeah. What we'll now do is have certain maybe sprints or team meetings or others at that place. It's always good to reduce travel amount for everybody. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be in, in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. Um, yeah, but Morticon, I don't know. I just think it's it's a fantastic news. Uh, there's 
still way to go it's not only the organization of, of everything but also oh, what's the point of it who is it good for um uh, how many people are going to attend etc pp yeah, but yeah. we'll we'll keep you updated and uh, we'll do our very best to give you the information and maybe even coupon codes or whatever <laughs> yeah. is going to be there <laughs> nice okay dog yeah um any other things on your list no i'm i'm done You're done. Uh, so am I. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for listening, everybody. Um, like always, we appreciate your feedback. There are all the social channels that you know of. Uh, we at least appreciate it on the same level if you uh, like or share uh, us and spread the word. Tell everybody else about the Mordicast. And we talk to you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.